Good morning. I hope you're having a good day. We have a really good story today. But let's start our lesson with a word of prayer, okay? Father, thank you for your goodness. Each one of our children and the big person that's helping today, I ask that you'd help the children to listen carefully, help them to learn and obey with a happy heart. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, our first verse oops, is found in Psalm 106, verse 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Why don't you stand up and we'll sing, okay? Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks unto the Lord. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks unto the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Our verse today is found in Genesis 26, 24. Fear not, for I am with thee. And today we're going to learn about some very brave young men that knew they didn't have to be afraid of something really, really scary. They knew they didn't have to be afraid. So let's hurry up. We'll say our verse three times, and then we can get into our story, okay? Okay, ready? Fear not, for I am with thee. Fear not, for I am with thee. Fear not, for I am with thee. Today's story starts with King Josiah from yesterday's story. Remember when the king heard that God was angry because the people did a lot of bad things and he was going to punish them and send their enemies? King Josiah said, no, I want to do what's right and I want to help the people to do what's right. And so he, he would call for a prophetess and she told him that if he did that, then God would have those bad things happen after he died. Well, Josiah, uh, Josiah kept his word, and he did what was right and taught the people to do what was right. He sent teachers throughout the whole country teaching the, to teach the people how to follow in God's ways. But after he died, the king came. His name was Nebuchadnezzar. Oops, not that picture. His name was Nebuchadnezzar. And King Nebuchadnezzar took all the princes back to his land with him. He looked for the men, the young men who were smart, handsome, respect, respectful. Mm -hmm. He didn't take the lazy ones. He didn't wait, take the ones that were pigs. Nope. Only the smart, very respectful ones. So he found some boys that were 12, 13, 14, 15 years old. We don't know how many boys got, were taken, but we know there were four special boys in the group. There were four boys who said, you know, things are going to be very different. Down in Babylon, they don't worship God and they do all sorts of bad things. And we're in trouble because our grandparents did what was wrong. So let's do what's right. And those four boys said, yes. We're going to be a team. We're going to do what's right. When they got to Babylon, those four boys found things very different. Mm -hmm. The first thing was they were given new names. The names they had had God's name in them. And their parents wanted them to do what was right and to worship God. But in Babylon, they were given new names that had the name of, of um, an idol in them. There was one boy whose name was Daniel. He was given the name Belshazzar. Baal, Baal was their big god. He was, he was their most important god. And that was his, his name. Then there was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were other gods that they had down there. And those are the names that they were given. Mm -hmm. They also found that there were a lot of foods that they weren't used to. And they looked, when they got to the dinner table, 
They looked, and you know what they saw? All kinds of food that they were not allowed to eat meat, like pork and all sorts of stuff that they weren't allowed to have. God told them, no, don't eat it. They didn't know why, but they knew that they weren't allowed to eat that. The reason was those foods could make them sick if they weren't cooked right. So God said, don't eat them. They didn't have to understand why. They just had to obey. But what were they going to do? That was the food that the king said they were supposed to eat. Hmm. So they went to the man. They went to the man who was in charge of them and said, excuse me, sir. We don't mean to be difficult, but our God says we're not supposed to eat this meat. And if we do, it's going to make us sick. Bad things will happen. Can we just eat vegetables, verduras? Can we just eat fruit and vegetables? And the man said, you know, if something happens, I'm in trouble. I don't. And Daniel said, tell you what, just 10 days. Let's take the test for 10 days and see if, if we're okay after 10 days. Only drink water, only eat fruit and vegetables. And the man said, well, 10 days can't hurt you. Okay. So for 10 days, they just ate fruit and vegetables and drank water. After 10 days, the man looked at him and they were healthier. Their hair was shiny and soft. Their teeth looked good. Their eyes looked good. Their skin, their muscles, they were healthier than all the other boys. And the man said, tell you what, your God is protecting you. You can eat whatever you want. Just stay healthy, okay? No problem. So they did what was right. And for three years, they went to university. And they studied as hard as they could. There was a big library there. They read all the books they could read. They listened to their ins instructors. And at the end of three years, they went before the king and all their teachers. And they had exams. And when they had their exams, they found that they were the smartest boys. They were smarter even than their teachers. Who helped them? God did because they obeyed. So the king gave them important jobs in his country. Time passed and they got older. And the, one day the king decided he was going to make a big statue of himself, make it out of gold. So he made this huge, huge statue. And then he had a big fiesta. And he said, we're going to have a big, big fiesta. And when the music blows, when Musicians play the music. Everybody has to bow down to this statue of me. And anybody that doesn't bow down is going to be thrown into the fiery furnace. There was a problem. Those boys couldn't bow down to that God. They were only supposed to worship the one true God. What could they do? What did they decide to do? They decided they were going to obey God and they were not going to bow down. So the day came and the big fiesta came and the trumpets blew and everybody bowed down except three boys. Now Daniel was not there. Daniel was not there, but Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were there. They didn't bow down. And their enemies came and said, the soldiers came and they took them. Why aren't you bowing down? We can't. We can't bow down. We can only bow to our God. Ooh, the king had said, you don't bow down. You get thrown into the fiery furnace. They were taken before the king. And the king saw who it was. He liked them. They were smart. They were wise. They were good men and honest. He said, I don't think you understood. See, I made this statue of me. And when the music plays, everybody's supposed to bow down. Now, you didn't understand. So we'll play the music again, and then you can bow down. Okay? And then everybody's happy. Good. And the boy said, no, we are not going to bow down. Our God said, we are not allowed to bow down. We can bow down to you as our king, but not to an idol. So you can throw us in that fire, and that's okay. Our God can protect us, but even if he lets us burn, that's okay. Because we are not going to bow down to that idol. <gasps> the king was so angry, his face turned purple. Who were these men to not obey him? He didn't care that they were the smartest men. 
he was so angry. He called the servant, his his soldiers said, throw those men into the fire and make that fire hotter than it's ever been before. So they took the boys, they took the well, they were men now, they took the men and they tied them up and they threw them in the fire. And that fire was so hot that the men that threw them in the fire, they died. That's how hot that fire was. The king was happy until, uh-oh, what is that? And he got very scared because he was looking into the fire and he was counting one, two, three, four men. And he said to his servants, didn't I throw three men in? They said, yes. He said, I see four men in there. And the one looks like the son of God. You know what? Those three men did not die. The men that threw them in the fire died, but they didn't die. That fire was so hot, it burned off their ropes. And then somebody came to talk to them. You know who came to talk to them? Jesus did. Jesus came to talk to them. And they were just having a good old time. They were in the fire talking to Jesus. It wasn't hot. They didn't even feel it. Well, the king was so scared. He sent, he sent and called his servants. He said, you call those boys, you call those men, and you tell them to come out of there. So soldiers went. They couldn't get too close. It was so hot. They said, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out of that fire. The men came out of the fire, and... They weren't, weren't burned at all. They didn't smell like smoke. Nothing was wrong with them. Their clothes were just like they had gone in there. And nobody could believe it. He was like, wow. And the king passed a law. He said, nobody says anything bad about the, the God of these three men. Nobody says anything bad. Or they will be punished really bad. See, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they knew this first. They had been taught it as little boys. Fear not, for I am with them. They knew another verse in the book of Isaiah that said, if you go through the fire, you won't be burned. That was a promise in God's word to them. And so when, when the king said, you do this what I say, and it was against what their God had said, they said, nope, we're not going to do it. No way. No way, sorry. They obeyed God and did what was right. Why? They knew this verse. Fear not, for I am with thee. Let's say our verse three times, please, and then we'll be done, okay? Fear not, for I am with thee. Fear not, for I am with thee. One more time. Fear not, for I am with and with thee. We don't have to be afraid of God as our daddy. We don't have to cry. We don't have to be afraid. We just have to say, God is with me and he will help me to do what I know is right.